Hello everyone, once again welcome to our channel Computer Science in Yoruba and English. In this lecture we'll be going to be looking into removal of unit productions. In the last lecture we looked into removal of epsilon productions. So if you know how to remove epsilon productions then you are good to go for this lecture. So if you peradventure do not know how to remove epsilon productions, I recommend you check that lecture out before actually proceeding with this because it's a step after the other you cannot remove unit productions if you still have epsilon it is very wrong for you to do that because at the moment we are on our way to converting a context free grammar into a normal form it could be chomsky it could be gray batch so any one of the two we actually need to perform these two operations that we are learning we already learned one which is removal of epsilon productions and like i said in this lecture we're going to be considering removal of unit productions so without further ado a rule is said to be a unit productions let's say for instance we have a rule a producing b let's say produces C B for instance and it produces um yeah let me just leave it like this for instance and this is a unit production because there is a unit present in the production so this is not a unit because it has another pair and a unit is said to be a non-terminal variable so if we have um a variable such that it produces a non-terminal variable B and it is alone, as in it is a unit on its own, then it is said to be a unit production. This is not a unit production because this is a terminal variable and this is a non-terminal. So this meets the criterion of unit production. So without further ado, let me quickly go into, uh, let me quickly mention one of, one of the important things um, before we actually delve into taking an example. So we'll be using the example we took from the removal of M epsilon productions because we already know that that one is free of epsilon production so we can actually use it here. I won't be talking about epsilon production here so if you need to understand that I recommend you check out that lecture. So let's say a unit production is when you have a or let's say when you have a like i said producing c it could be anything it could be b so such that a is not equal to c so what am i trying to say it doesn't make any sense when i say so a is not equal to c at least i can see that a is not equal to c but there's a reason why i need to point that out because in in examples that you'll be encountering in the real sense you discover that there's there's need for you to actually do some kind of mapping establishing um, some kind of relationships based on the identified um based on the identified peers so because you had you have to identify some peers in your rules production rules once you've identified the peers if there's need for you to do some kind of margin you actually do them or let me say some uh, new derivations don't let me say margin because you're not actually margin them so we can say a produces B for instance and B produces C so if you look at this this is the second item and this is the second this is the second item and this is the first item here so we can say this and this are together and we can say A can produce C so like I said we can match these two guys together to form a new rule Merging them together doesn't mean that A no longer produces B. It doesn't mean that B no longer produces C. But it simply means that A also now produces C. So don't let us get it confused. So it's very important that we actually know that. So it's uh, creating new relationships or new peers is actually very important. We have to be able to identify how to create them. So, and it is very simple. After you must have... Let me take that example again. After you must have identified A producing B and B producing C as a unit. So it is sufficient because this is the second item here and this is the first here. So we can hereby say A produce C. So let me try and make a counter example intentionally. So let's just say for argument's sake that B also produces A at some point. Can we marry this guy together? No, because A cannot produce A. 
So that is the relevance of the definition I give the other I gave the other time. So it is important for us to identify all those. First, we identify the pairs in our grammar. Second, we do some margin to create new pairs based on the defined pairs. So I hope that is clear. So once again, for clarity, I'll say if B produces C, let me intentionally create another one. Let's say C produces D. This is the second year and this is the, okay, let's say B also produces F. So we can say, we have to create a new set of rules here by saying, let's say these, these are the original rules we have or the our original um, peers that we can find. So we have to create new peers such that this guy and this guy can make another rule. So A and, a and F can come together. So we can say A can create F. So let's check for another one. This guy and this guy can marry, so we can say A can create C. Let's check again. This guy and this guy can marry, so we can say B can produce D, and so on and so forth. So that is how you actually bring out new peers from your original peers. So once you've done that, all you have to do is actually very, very simple. And that I'll be taking an example, the last lecture talking about removal of epsilon productions. So I'm one, I want to choose that because I know that we've already removed the epsilon productions. And like I said earlier, there's no point removing unit productions if you still have epsilon production. So it's actually step by step. You have to remove the epsilon productions before you can say you want to remove unit production. So if the language you are given, or if uh, I beg your pardon, if the grammar you are given contains productions that has epsilon, then you have to remove epsilon. If it does not contain epsilon, then you are you are good to go. You can go ahead to remove unit productions before you can now start talking about Chomsky and Graybash. So without further ado, let's quickly take an example. Okay, the example we used in our last lecture that we already eradicated the epsilon is, this is the rule, this is the final result of it being epsilon free. ASB produces SB, then AS, A produces AAS, and also AS and also A. B produces S, B, S, and A, and B, B. So my first assignment is actually to identify the peers I have. So if I don't have peers also, it means that I'm good to go. I can, I don't have peers I don't have um I don't have unit productions and I don't have epsilon productions then I can go ahead to do Chomsky that we'll be talking about later on. So let's identify the peers that we have here. So let's see. Does this production does it contain any units? Check here, check here, check here. You can see that it does not contain any unit production. So how about this? Does it contain units? Check here, check here check here no unit please be mindful this is not a unit because it's a terminal variable so we cannot call it a unit so let's go to the third one this very one does it produce a unit check here check here yes this is a unit because it is a and this is not a unit so we can say b can produce a so let's write that b can produce a so as our units. So that is the unit production that we have. And the way to get rid of it is that anywhere we have B, yes, we can add the new set of rules from A. What am I trying to say? So let me just, let me, let me not get rid of this so that I can show you clearly because B produces A. Okay, so we said B produces A. So it means that anywhere I find B, 
In addition to the rules already defined for B, I can include the rules defined for A. I think that is very simple. If I have B producing, for instance, AS, uh, and it's producing, let's say, BA, and I have A producing, or uh, let's say, BB, SB, and so on and so forth. So it means that in the process, because B can produce A, in addition to the rules I already have for B, I need to add new set of rules such that this guy will be copied from A and will be added to this place. So we are going to see the demonstration now when we treat that example. So let me go back here. Yeah? So we already said B can produce A. So for clarity, we can see that this has no peer already, so there's no point touching it. This has no peer already, there's no point touching it. But since B can produce A here, what do we do? We add the production from A, we copy it and add it here. It does not change the production of A itself. But we are only copying this data here and adding it to the one here. It's as simple as that. And when you are done, you can get rid of your unit productions. So what am I trying to say? So let's say I have, let me quickly copy this guy. Let me get rid of this. Okay. So let's say S produces ASB. That doesn't change. SB, AS. A produces AAS, MAS, and A. Then B can produce SB, sorry, SBS. Then A then bb and if you remember we are saying that b can produce a so it means that in addition to the rules already defined here it can also produce these rules i hope that is clear enough so we can say in addition to that let's copy this data here let's copy it here also it's as simple as that so we have a a s a, S, and A. And with that, we've been able to create the new set of rules. And afterwards, we can get rid of this guy and any other units that we find in our productions. And afterwards, we can say that our production, or let me say our grammar, is unit production free so it means that it no longer has unit production and once you've done that you've removed the epsilon productions and you've removed the unit productions just as we, uh, we we've learned in this lecture then it means that we are good to go we can actually proceed to uh, converting the grammar itself which is this into um, a normal form it could be Chomsky it could be gray batch so I hope We've been able to understand this and if you have any questions reservations contributions observations concerning any of these lectures you can kindly use the comment section or you can email us at csitutes at gmail.com see you in the next lecture